So in today's lecture, I gave you two PDFs. Tony, two PDFs. One PDF is what we're looking at right now. The other PDF is from uh, the past that I did, Gazebo, Ross Control, and Baxter. This has a lot of details about Gazebo. Okay, I better skip it for now, but it tells you just a lot of details about Gazebo. A lot of details, okay? And then you come here to URDF and Gazebo and some tools and things like that. You don't need to look at the whole thing, but look at least at least the first section, okay? So Gazebo is a 3D uh, physics driven physics engine simulator, right? And uh, Gazebo started with ROS, but now is independent of ROS. There's a package called Gazebo ROS that helps to connect them, but they are independent. Gazebo can be used independently of ROS. Yeah. Uh, quick example: If I just say Gazebo like this, I get this. But this is not connected to ROS. This is just Gazebo running by itself. Yeah. If I say. <clears throat> If I say ROS run gazebo ROS gazebo, yeah, that starts gazebo, but it's connected to ROS. So it means that gazebo right now is publishing topics and services to ROS. But I need to use gazebo ROS to do that. When you kill gazebo, you don't close this window directly. You you kill this window over here. Why? Because actually gazebo has two sides. The front end and the back end. What does that mean? You guys know? Sometimes gazebo will hang like that. You can say, hey, I, I want to find the process for the user called gazebo. Yeah? So you find this number, and then you can say kill that number, and then it kills the process. Sometimes it hangs. Okay, <clears throat> so here you need to know PS for process with gazebo as uh, using rep on the pipe to, to get the process ID and then you can kill it. Okay, uh, for example, if I say GC server like this, GZ server, that starts the back end. Gazebo is a server. Yes, a client server uh, system. So right now the server is running. If I say GZ client, that opens up. Yeah? I can introduce a shape here. Yeah? And then I can kill the client. And then I can open the client. And it's still there because the server hasn't died. The client is just the front end. The, for you to see it, yeah? But the server runs all the physics stuff, all right? So there's two sides to Gazebo, the client and the server. All right, let's go back to this presentation. So we want to uh, start building a few things. The first thing we do is go to example models, rectangular prism. Okay, let me close a few windows. Raw CD are uh, uh, example models, <coughs> rectangular prism. So here we have this uh, model 1.4 SDF. <coughs> we can say ROS run gazebo ROS. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> here gazebo ROS is the package, okay? And these things that you see up here are the nodes. Gazebo can be a node. But you also have spawn model. And so spawn model is a node that says, you need to give me an argument. And that argument is the model. So you say spawn model. And if you look at the gazebo tutorials, you'll see that there's uh, several options. Number one, you need a file. Uh, is it? Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, you need a file. And the name of the file is model-1-4-SDF. And then uh, you need to say what kind of file is this? Because it can be a URDF or it can be an SDF. In this case, it's an SDF model. So you give that flag. And then uh, you give the name 
of the model inside the SDF. Yeah? So we say the name of the model is rectangular prism. For example, if you don't remember, uh, we can say less this one. You see that model name right here is rectangular prism, right? So that's the name that we are including. This name is the name we're including here. Okay, so that's what you need to do if you want to load directly uh, with spawn models. So I press enter on that. Oh, I need a ROS core. And as soon as I do that, it says loading model XML from file. And I'm waiting for this. Let's see. Let's run. Let me try that again. I'm doing something wrong here. Okay. Waiting for a service. It's mm, this is not loading properly. Anyone know what I'm doing wrong? Hmm? Well, maybe I need to start. Let's run. I need to open Gazebo. I think I thought it would open it automatically, but it doesn't. <clears throat> Let me uh, move this window over. Let me kill that. Uh, okay, so let me start this from the beginning. Kill that, kill that. So uh, let's do that again. You start with gazebo. I need to update my slide. <clears throat> and then we're going to, s now this word is imp important for you to become familiar with, spawn. Spawn, spawn. spawn is like load. Sl load a model onto, onto gazebo. So we do that. And then here it comes, okay? There it is. It's big. Also, this uh, here it says real time factor. Guys, you should be running it on your computers, yeah? You can run everything like this by yourselves. Yeah, it's, that real time factor 1.0 means the time in the computer and the time in the outside world is the same. Yeah, when that number is 0 0.5, it would mean that the time in the simulation is twice as slow or half of the real time uh, compared to the thing. Because simulations can be intensive. Your computer may not be able to handle the computation so well. So the idea of time changes. Yeah, so the time factor is important. Uh, if I cancel this again, you can change how that model loads by in, in introducing XYZ coordinates. So here, uh, let's say, let me change that Z to 10. Yeah, so it's going to move that box, box up uh, by 10 meters. And then gravity brings it back to the floor. Gravity brings it back to the floor. Yeah, so you, you have things like that. Uh, now, you know, right now, in order for us to run this, we need to be in the right path. Because we're saying, I want to spawn this model, right? I want to spawn uh, model 1.4, 1.4SDF, right? So this is not very convenient that you have to like CD to a location to then load it. The next thing that we can do is uh, use ROS pack find. 
ROS Pack Find here in bold is a ROS uh, command that returns the path to a package. Yeah? So here, we, here for example, I could change to anywhere in my computer. I'm not in the right path, right? But I can still say, and let me restart ROS uh, Gazebo again. There's a, there's a reset command in Gazebo. That's probably what I should be doing. Uh, here, it's hanging again. When it does that, you need to kill it. Kill it. Yeah, so. Uh, PS, grab, Gazebo. Yeah, and then uh, this one. So I want to, uh, uh, how can I know which one is the one I should kill? Both. Well, you need to know what it is. These are both process IDs. There's two of them. Now that one died, so fine. You need to know what, what it means. So there are processes, processes that are run. Okay, so now uh, I say ROS run, Gazebo ROS, spawn model, file. But now I don't just say model 1.4 because I cannot find it. So I need to use money sign, parentheses, ROS pack find example models, and then I can give the relative path, rectangle, prism, model uh, 1.4. So here, money sign means I want to get the value of a variable. ROS pack find, name of package, this is EX MPL models. That's going to return the path to that package. But then we want to go inside this folder, Prism, and then in this folder we can find that one. Okay, so let's start Gazebo and take a look. Press enter here. And if the path is correct, then you'll have no errors. Okay? And even better is if we can then do this from a launch file, a launch file, right? So uh, we have this link uh, to this launch file. It's called add rectangular prism. Uh, CD launch. This is... Here. Uh, rectangular prism. Example models. Oh, add rectangular. Can you guys see it? Yeah, here. This one. <clears throat> yeah, so we have uh, node name. This can be anything that you want. We have package, because these were raws, spawn models. Now pay attention to this part right here arguments. Yeah, it's a new field uh, for a launch file that you haven't seen. We say arguments equals quotes. And then we need to do the same thing we did before, file. Now here we don't say ROS pack find. Inside the launch file, we just use find. Yeah, find example models, rectangular prism, model 1.4, SDF, model name, rectangular prism, XYZ coordinates. Yeah, and uh, this uh, launch file still has not uh, started ROS automatically, so we'll need to do that ourselves. Uh, let me see what did I do. I, there's uh, something strange in my computer because my other windows just disappeared. So, uh, oh, this already running. Ross run, gazebo, Ross, gazebo. Uh, <clears throat> something wrong in my computer. I recently updated my NVIDIA drivers and I think it's messing, messing this up. Okay, I started gazebo and uh, I need to then run this launch file. Ross launch, example models, add rectangular prism.launch. So I run that, and then there it is, okay? So it's even better with the launch file, right? <laughs> and the find command is, is very useful. Okay. 
And then we have, uh, maybe I'll skip this quickly. We have more advanced launch files. This one will take away the gravity so things begin to float in the air. Yeah. Uh, and then we add a cylinder like this one. Uh, so you can get several things. And this way you can spawn many things together. And so let's, let's launch this last one, add cylinder. Um, where is Reset? Uh, reset World is yes, doing that. Let's do a uh, ROS launch. Example models and add cylinder. So this is going to open two things, but now what I want you to see is that we can begin to interact with to run the other one independently of this. Ross launch, example models, add, okay, do something like this. Okay, so we're, we're adding these two. And then, right now, uh, Gazebo is interacting with Ross. So Gazebo is publishing topics, and it also has uh, service requests. <clears throat> so for example, I can say, raw service list, remember? And look at all the stuff that we get. We get a lot of services that are being run by, by Gazebo. One that we really care about is called set model state. Now this is a service, so <coughs> this Gazebo set model state has a request and a response. The request, you need to send a, a model state. We'll see what that is. And the response will say, yeah, this is working or this is not working. Let's take a look. Uh, raw service info, gazebo, set, model, state. <clears throat> so the notice gazebo, uh, the type of this service, it's a gazebo messages set model state. Okay? <clears throat> you can look at that message using uh, raw service, uh, raw message, gazebo, or raw service. Ross service, what did I use? Ross service show. So. so, state, what is Gazebo state? Well, in robotics, the word state is like all the information you can get from something. So, this is an important word, right? Pose. Where is this thing? Where is the model based uh, on the work on its parent reference frame? You have a post, position, orientation. You have a twist, linear, and angular, and you have a reference frame. And then this says, you know, is this working okay? And some status message. <clears throat> so with this, what can you do? You can move the model to a position, or you can give it a twist. Yeah, and gazebo. <clears throat> so, we, again, we can do this using a manual method or we can use a node, but we can say raw service call, gazebo, set model state, <clears throat> and then in the service call, like just like public, uh, publishing a topic, we can say model state, model name, the same twist, angular, da da da. And what that's going to do, it's going to take the cylinder and rotate it around the z-axis, right? 
And then we'll see that we can program these things in the node here. And run that node here. So let me do this manually real quick. <coughs> No, I, can, I need to do it by hand. Let's see. Raw service call gazebo set model state. Then these, then these uh, model states. Then these model name rectangular prism twist. Then these, Angular, then these. See how I do it? You always have to finish the brackets first and then come back. Okay, let's run that. Uh, nothing happened. What happened? Maybe. Let's see, let's say twist linear, oops, twist linear. It, I think I'm just doing it one moment, like one step, <clears throat> not, not continually. So you can, like, I'm going to do it again, and you'll see it shake a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> Okay, so if we do it in the node, uh, let's run that node real quick just to see it. <clears throat> Rush run, uh, example, gazebo set state, uh, example, gazebo set prism state, example. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like, <clears throat> kind of doing something like this. <clears throat> now let's look at that code. <clears throat> Real quick, uh, example is it? It's a prison So I won't spend a lot of time, but you need the gazebo messages for model state and set model state. We have some strings, standard input output, standard messages, some math. Okay. <clears throat> and service ready. This line is key. So <clears throat> uh, checking if we have a service exists, yes or no. Based on, on this service topic, this will be okay or false. And then if it exists, it means gazebo is running then you can create the client, so service client. Uh, here's a variable name. <clears throat> you use the handle to get this. This is the type and then the topic, right? Now that we have the client, we need the message. So this is a model state. Remember that we have request and response. In request, we have model. <clears throat> uh, and then we need to access all of those things. We can have the name, we can have the position, we can have the orientation, we can have the linear twist and the angular twist. Once you have that, you also set the reference frame to world, and then you can send it over. So we, as before, hopefully you remember from last week, you say call, you send that message, um, and here you collect the response. So here you can collect it in results, and you say it didn't work or it did work. Okay, so this is a way to communicate with Gazebo. Um, okay, we'll stop here for today. Uh, next uh, week, I will continue one or two more sections on this, and then we'll move on to the next chapter. The next section is introducing a controller into the simulation. Okay, right now we're still moving things manually, so the next is based on homework one that you did two weeks ago, how to introduce a control. Okay, so we start gazebo and then we can spawn the model with this file and this model, one dof robot, there's a mistake here. And then we can see it here in gazebo. 
And from the view menu, we can select joint or transparent or, or even reset camera just to, to change the views and the properties that we can visualize. Now, of course, this is not very convenient because, as we said, uh, we need to be able to, to change to the right directory in order to access that file. So if we want to do it from anywhere in the computer, we can always use a launch file to facilitate this. Uh, another thing that we're going to do differently in this launch file is here point number one. Load the URDF first to the parameter server. Now, this is the first time we are doing this in class, I think. And this is a very, very important point. From now on, every time we have a URDF file, we're going to load it onto the parameter server first. And then we're going to spawn the robot, not from a file, but from the parameter. Yeah? Does anyone know the name of the parameter where we are going to save this file to? The name of the parameter. All parameters have names and then the values. Do you know the name of this parameter? Seems not. I will introduce it to you in a second. The second thing that we do, uh, actually this point number two can, can be flexible. Start gazebo through gazebo ROS. We can do that in the launch file now or we can uh, do it separately. In fact, uh, your launch file right now does not have step number two. That's okay. That means we need to start gazebo manually right now. Later, we will uh, put start gazebo automatically in the launch file. Okay? And third, we're going to spawn the model to gazebo from the parameter server. Okay? So, let's, uh, before we launch this one, let's take a look and see what's inside. <clears throat> We can do raw set, minimal robot description, minimal robot description dot launch. Maximize the window. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, let's look at this line. First, we have the parameter tag. That means we're going to create a parameter. Then we need to give the name of the parameter. In terms of loading the URDF to the parameter server, we will always use this name as a standard unless we have more than one robot but if we only have one robot we're going to use robot description okay then we need to give the value actually there's a few commands you can use right now we're going to use the command text file this will give the value to this parameter based on this file uh, if we have any command that returns a value we need to use the money sign and the parentheses, right? This one here. And we say find, which is like ROS package find. It's going to return the path of this package in your computer. Doesn't matter where you are. So it'd be home, username, uh, ROS, Indigo, ROS workspace, source, blah, 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 minimal robot description. And then the file name. Okay? That's the first thing that we do. And then, uh, let me do this. Let me comment this out because you don't have it right now. Comments strictly follow this format. Exclamation mark, dash, dash, space. And at the end, space, dash, dash. That's a comment. Okay? So that's not going to happen. Otherwise, here what we're going to do is we're going to take a zero ROS. We're going to, this uh, tag right here, is let's include another launch file in this launch file. Yeah, and this launch file is in Gazebo ROS in the launch folder and it's called emptyworld.launch. Uh, this file will start Gazebo with several arguments. Okay, actually our arguments can go here, but I don't include any to make it simple. And then we can do spawn the robot in the launch file we always need to have a node name. Uh, this name can be anything. Here we just say spawn URDF. The package is Gazebo ROS. This is spawn model. And then this uh, tag here is very important. Arguments equals then exclamation marks all the way to the end. And inside of this thing, we can have many, many arguments or 
like for example, here we have, we don't say um, file anymore. We don't say file like we did before. We say param. We're gonna load the file, not, f we're gonna load uh, the, the, the model of the robot, not from the file, but from the parameter. What parameter? Robot description. Why? Because we created it up here. This is still URDF type, not SDF, and we still include model as one DOF robot. Okay? So that's what we're doing. Two things here. Uh, save it. Okay. Let me uh, close Gazebo one more time just to make it fresh. Yeah, we'll un open an empty gazebo here. Come back over here, and then we can say ROS launch. All right? And then starting and loading. Okay? Now, that's nice. We can be anywhere in the computer, and I will do this. Yeah, if the model has already been loaded, and you try it again, it'll say, over here in Gazebo, spawn model failure, model one dwarf robot already exists. So it doesn't do it again. It just, it just cancels that service. Okay. <clears throat> All right. You should be trying that with me. Yeah. So you can get to see it, how it works. And again, from the view menu, uh, you can see joints. You can see the frames. Uh, you can also see the center of mass. And you can see context. We're going to use that a little bit later. <clears throat> now, the center of mass for the whole thing appears like this. Uh, and it would be somewhere in the middle. And context is for collision. And apparently, you can't see much here. Let me see. Sorry. The contact actually would be around here. Why doesn't it not show it right now? Maybe we need to add some uh, collision elements uh, to the URDF. I can't remember if we have collision elements here right now. Let me let me take a quick look. Let's take a quick look. Uh, we do have the collision element. So I'm not sure about that. Let me, I'll have to think about why we cannot see the context yet. <clears throat> now, if you want to check if the URDF file was loaded into the parameter server, we need to look at this parameter, robot description. Now, some of you, your memory may, may not be clear, but the, to check things in the ROS parameter server, we use the ROS pram uh, command and here we can say list. Now there's a lot of stuff here from uh, Gazebo, right? But we need a robot description. Duh, where is it? It's right here. Okay, robot description is right here. And how do we check this value? ROS param. No info. Get. Not the list. Get. And then you give the, the name of the parameter. Get, give me the value of the parameter called robot description. Well, it's very long, right? It's, it's, it's a URDF file that you, that you saw before. Yeah, it's that URDF file. It's in the parameter server, OK? And from now on, we will always use the parameter's uh, robot description to look at the URDF file, OK? All right. So we can say list and then robot description. And uh, a few more things about gazebo models. When we say let's load a cylinder, right? Actually, there, that model needs to exist somewhere in your computer. It's not just magic, right? There's, there's a model for that, the way that it looks. And in Gazebo, all models are stored in the hidden file .gazebo. .gazebo, don't forget the dot, in your home folder, in your username folder. Yeah? So again, you can say cd 
or just CD. <coughs> and then you can say, hey, let me see Gazebo. And it's right here. <coughs> and then inside Gazebo, you'll have another folder. Uh, in my case, it's models gazebo sim.org, uh, but it might have a slightly different name. Yeah, and you'll start to see that here there are many uh, objects. And I probably have another folder with more objects over here. You can also uh, use those models to insert them into your world via the insert menu. For example, I come over here, I click insert, and this menu will say, hey, in this folder, you have all these things, all these models. Yeah, for example, uh, I can click on this one and uh, move it anywhere and just click on it. And I can uh, use these to resize them. Oh, you see those green lines? Those are the contacts. Uh, if I zoom in, you'll see blue, blue dots on the floor like this and those are contacts and the green line is the direction of the con the, the normal of the contact the normal direction of the contact surface yeah <coughs> and uh, you can you can introduce many things uh, including really advanced worlds <coughs> uh, let me see let me see for example gas station yeah you can int introduce a really big thing like this. Um, I forget the name of, of some of these words. You have ladders. You, you have all kinds of things. Um, office building. Yeah, you can, you can create very advanced models, including water, air, mountains, uh, anything like that. It's just models. Uh, you, can, you can find, uh, you can put uh, rovers, any kind of robot, right? <coughs> Willow Garage is the office of the company that created PR2. You can put entire buildings inside. So it's very advanced and very powerful if you want to have enough time to create advanced models, whether robots or the world, okay? And you can adjust all of those properties here. You have the models here, yeah? Actually, you also have here uh, the physics of the world. For example, gravity. Right now, it's set at negative 9.8 over here. You can, if I set it to zero and take gravity away, um, Maybe these models will start floating if, if there's a contact on them. Uh, or maybe when we introduce them at the beginning. For example, let me try a submarine. Sinking, uh, I cannot see it. Something happened. Okay, these are just, anyways, these are some examples. And you can also reset, uh, reset. Here, actually, nothing changes, but you can reset the world if things move. Okay. <clears throat> if it cannot find a model, it'll say something like this, un unable to load this file for some reason. So there was a, there was a segmentation fault, and that's why my, my, my gazebo stopped working. I can start it again. So all of these are saved there. And uh, more models can be inserted uh, with this script. Uh, so, so right now, uh, maybe some of you have not downloaded many models. Some of you have, some of you haven't. If you click on this link, it'll take you to a file. You can download it. It's a sh file. Then you run it, and it'll automatically save all the models into the gazebo folder. Yeah. If you don't have these folders, what Gazebo tries to do is look for them online and the default website. And then try to download it and install it before you use it. But this may take a long time. Yeah. So you want to download them first to make sure you can load Gazebo quickly with a model. All right. Now, so once we, once we 
insert uh, our robot. Yeah, we can also look at the gazebo topics and gazebo services. We want to be very familiar with these. So for example, we can say ROS topic list. And we have things that are the link states. In our current uh, robot, we have two links, right? And so the link states will be their position, their orientation. For example, we can say ROS topic echo gazebo link states. And I can make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, but you can see you have <coughs> the pose. Actually, it's showing you how many links you have. If you look at the top, it says name, ground plane link, 1DF robot link 1, 1DOF robot link 2. We have three links. For each of these three links, you're going to get a position and an orientation. So here's 1, 2, and 3. And then you're going to get a twist. Are they moving? Because they may be moving, right? So they have a linear velocity and an angular velocity, the three of them. OK? That's what, those are the link states. Then we have the model states. These are the actual models, like the cylinder or the ground. So let's take a look. Here at the top, we see ground plane and one DOF robot. Those are the models. The, the floor and the robot, two models. Yeah, so here you see not the links themselves, but the actual models. And one robot counts as one model with its world frame, uh, base frame of reference. What's the top of Oh, don't know. Yeah. Oh, come on. How many numbers in orientation? Uh, numbers? Yeah. How many, vec how many axes on this orientation? Not axes. Four, four values represent the orientation. What is it? Four values. Huh? Quaternion, yes. Quaternion. Some of you don't know what a quaternion is. Some of you studied it and have forgotten. Uh, ask, if you don't know what a quaternion is, ask Tony. Then he has to go back and study, and then he can tell everyone what a quaternion is. Okay, uh, what else do we have? <clears throat> uh, and then we can also set the link state so we can change them and move them around. We also have services, raw service list. Okay, uh, here we can apply a body wrench. Uh, we can also <clears throat> get join properties or get link properties. Okay, but we need to say raw service call something something. Uh, we also uh, can uh, get, we can spawn models, URDF models, SDF models. We can set joint and link properties. Yeah, so we can do both, some of these through topics, some of these through services, and some of these through both. <clears throat> And a key topic here is gazebo link states. Uh, so names, poses, and twists. <coughs> we can do that. 